Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's adventure is a windy, sunny, and very hot, sticky day. However, there are very ominous dark clouds just above rolling in and a rumble of thunder coming with it. So, fingers crossed, hopefully we get a storm. Now, I do have a story to tell you about this exact location, but we'll get into that a little later on. I know a lot of you will find it very interesting to see what it looks like now compared to what it did about seven to eight months ago. So we'll save that for a little bit. Uh, right now I've got the refrigerator plugged into the Jackery. I've got it down to four degrees Celsius. Inside I've got all my food plus water. So that'll stay nice and cold. The Jackery is at 100%. That'll last more than three to four days. No problem is what I've been finding. So. That is all ready to go. First off, I do want to get started on a hot drink. So I'm going to make up a coffee right here on the tailgate table and then I start doing some camp chores. So let's get a hot drink on the go.
right guys, with coffee break finished up, just before I get started on collecting some firewood for the fire pit that we brought, I'm gonna jump up inside of the tent and just cool off, relax for a few moments. While I'm up there, I might as well get the bedding set up and tell you guys the story about this location. So, I'll meet you guys upside in the tent. Alright guys, up in the rooftop tent, and Boomer loves it up here. <laughs> this is not his first time in a rooftop tent. He uh, he knows not to go out the door and down the ladder, obviously. He's very smart. Um, so, being up here, if you guys did not catch the last two episodes with the Jeep, you guys would have seen this rooftop tent and the awning and the whole setup. This is definitely awesome. My thoughts on it are I love it. It works really, really great for two people or just me by myself with Boomer, which is awesome. So today we have two very lightweight sleeping bags from Near Zero. Uh, I have them both unzipped. So they're basically like a big blanket. And the reason why I brought two is because sometimes Boomer likes to kind of take a blanket and go for a little walk with it down to the other side of the tent. So I have two, one for me and basically one for him to steal. And he is laying at the end right down by my feet with his head stuck out looking at the ocean waves. And I've got to tell you guys, we had an incredible, incredible view right here. And I'll show it to you guys in just a few moments. So to get with my story here, uh, this location, if you guys saw my video many months back with Hurricane Fiona, I came out and I went hammock camping. This is that location. Now, this location got decimated. Literally the forest right behind the Jeep on the awning side, right where the fire pit is, right out this window, which you guys will see again a little later on, used to all be a standing forest. In fact, right where the Jeep is parked right now, this never used to be here. All this white rock area right up against the, the coastline is where I walked out with my bare feet in the middle of the night right to the cliff edge and looked at the ocean. This used to all be grass and forest. All the trees that are pushed way back into the forest right now that I'm gonna be cutting up for firewood, all that brush pile used to all be a thriving forest, all standing tall trees full of life. Now it looks like a bulldozer came through here and just pushed it all back. So this is the location exactly where I hammock camped. The hammock was about 20 feet in the woods. The two trees that I hung to are still standing. They're still over there with a whole bunch of other trees falling in on them, just like it was the morning I woke up and got the heck out of here. So, funny spot, uh, funny story for that. So hopefully tonight we get another storm. Those clouds are still rolling in, big thunder clouds right above right on the open ocean the breeze is coming through here it's very very relaxing and enjoyable so that's the story with the location we're going to be collecting that firewood and burning it tonight that got blown over in the hurricane so now that you guys are up to date where i'm at i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a pano 360 degree view up here on what it looks like from up in this tent and why i have the jeep positioned the way it is because it is epic so check this out
All right, guys, finished up with processing some firewood. I've got quite a bit of it. All this wood back here, most of it is dry. Some of it's still a little wet on the inside. So I made two separate piles. Well, one big pile, but two sides to the pile. One side's bone dry, the other side's a little bit wet. And I've got it stacked under the awning right next to the tire. So I know what's ready to burn and what needs a little bit of drying time. So now that that's done and the storm's kind of all over the place, we got blue sky out in the ocean, still all this dark ominous clouds still rolling this way. You can hear rumbling and a little bit of thunder off in the distance. So who knows what's gonna happen. The winds are kicking up, which is really nice. The temperatures come down to about 20 degrees Celsius right now, and it is much later in the day. So I've got a ton of firewood to go. There is an outside fire pit. I'm not gonna be using that because it is too close to the Jeep, first of all. It's right underneath the awning. And second of all, it's kind of not in the right path for the wind to blow the embers. So I'm gonna get my foldable fire pit that I have stored in the back of the Jeep. I'm gonna move it to an area that I think is safe. And if the wind changes direction, I can pick it up with two sticks and actually move the whole fire pit. Whereas this fire pit, I cannot move. So I'm just gonna be leaving that alone for someone else. There is a couple pieces of dry firewood in it though. So I might as well split those down and start the fire with that because it's very, very dry stuff. But that'll be later on this evening. Right now, I do need to turn my attention to starting on some supper. And I'm gonna be doing that on a new stove that I have here with some charcoal. So I'm gonna get that set up probably over here on the ground. I might try and find a rock to see if I can prop it up on the rock and uh, get a loaded full of charcoal and start on some supper. Alright guys, so what I've got here is a very interesting stove. I've used this one time at home. This is actually the first time using it out in the field. 
and I love it so much I'm going to be making it part of my regular kind of outdoor cooking equipment either in the truck or the Jeep or possibly in another application but this thing is excellent um, the thing is the legs open quite wide so I'm going to attempt to use it right here on the tailgate table um, it is going to be charcoal so an open flame these gas jugs up top are empty there's no gas in these today so I'm not worried about flames coming up and uh, causing a, a catastrophe basically but it is kind of it wants to fall off right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather up some large rocks off the ground and I'm going to prop them underneath both to protect some of this a little bit of plastic trim here I don't think it'll cause any real major issue but um, I'm going to put some rocks down underneath to basically make it nice and steady. I could put it on the ground, but realistically, I mean, this is a good height for cooking and working and whatnot. I'd like to have it up here. So I'm going to gather some rocks, put them on the table underneath and sideways, just kind of hold it where I need it to go. Uh, it's kind of a makeshift setup. I did not bring a table with me today because I have one built into the Jeep and I was in a hurry to get out here and start camping. So. Like I said, I could put it on the ground. I'm just going to try and do this. And if this fails, then I will ultimately put it on the ground. So let's get this rigged up and get it full of charcoal and get a fire going and start cooking because I am starving. some rocks placed around the barbecue area or the charcoal fire pit on the tailgate I uh, just want to point out that I'm using match lit charcoal meaning it's already soaked in lighter fluid and as soon as you put a match in that charcoal it does flame up quite a bit for a few minutes these jugs do have gasoline fumes in them so I'm actually going to just take them off the rack just to be you know a little bit cautious here the flames might get up a little bit anything can happen so I'm just going to get these off here. They're tiny roto packs. They're locked with the key. So I just got to unlock the lock, spin them off, take the two red ones down, put them on the ground where they're not going to blow away. And then I can put them back up there later on this evening and leave them. Like I said, they're empty, but the fumes are very, very dangerous if it does come in a, in a kind of close proximity to a flame. Um, and I got a lot going on here, so I don't want any vehicle fires. So I'm going to remove these just to be extra, extra safe. 